Hi everyone. Today we'll discuss about the dynamic programming. I know 90% of the people are afraid of the dynamic programming. They feel that dynamic programming is very tough. Okay. Today I'll make it very easy for you. After watching this video, you will say dynamic programming is not very tough. It is just one concept which we need to understand. And how to approach the problem, that is the only key here. So this is my first video. Today I will just talk about the introduction. After that I will upload the videos or for some important questions which uh, were part of the some Google interviews, Amazon interview, Microsoft interview, some product based companies used to ask those questions. We'll discuss those questions but most important is you should understand what is dynamic programming. And the basic thing you should understand is how it works. How to think about that a particular problem we can solve with the help of dynamic programming. Most of the time people don't able to understand, hey, when to use dynamic programming, I don't know. Let's say you got some question, you will give some try, you will try to solve the question. You are not able to understand, can I use dynamic programming here or not? So today I'll clear each of these concepts. The one thing you need to do is, please watch the complete video if you're really looking for the dynamic programming concepts. All right. So let me quick jump. Uh, okay, let me start with that part. So before going to dynamic programming, let me take you one simple concept called recursion. So I think all of you know, this is the simple concept. If you don't know, let me explain you. Recursion is nothing but whenever a function call itself is known as the recursion. Okay. Whenever a function call itself, that is the recursion. For example, let's say, let's take one example. You want to find the nth Fibonacci number. Now, if you don't know about the Fibonacci series, so let me just write it down for you. Fibonacci series is nothing but it will be 0, 1, 1 and the next term will be the sum of previous two. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8 and so on. Right? So that is the Fibonacci num number. Now, so 0th number is 0. Let's say, let's say first, second is this one. For example, we can go that way. So you need to find the nth Fibonacci number. What you need to do, just call for the n minus 1 plus n minus 2 and you just need to return the summation of that okay so this is the simplest code for the Fibonacci number okay what is the Fibonacci series and how we can get it so you will say hey what is recursion here so let me write one quick code okay it will be very quick please give me one second let us create one project called dynamic programming okay we will understand the code okay now let's write one simple class uh, fibonacci all right what about what i want here is let's say n is nothing but five i want the fifth fibonacci number let me call one function called fibonacci of five this method will just give me the fifth Fibonacci number all right so I'll call this Fibonacci number to get the fifth Fibonacci number we need to define it private uh, static integer is the return type and the fifth int n what you will do what we are saying is we are returning the Fibonacci of n minus 1 because if we know fib of n is nothing but the sum of previous two numbers which is n minus 1 and n minus 2. That is the question. All right. So this question is done. Now here I want to tell you very, very important thing about recursion. If in the in the recursion, what we are saying is whenever a function call itself, we are calling that that part. Okay, we are calling inside inside Fibonacci function. We are calling again Fibonacci function. So you think about that, you will keep calling, keep calling, it will never end. So the most important part is if you will not end, you will not define the condition when you want to stop your function call, 
it will be infinite loop and you will get the stake overflow error stake overflow error is nothing but your memory is full okay so for any kind of recursion the base condition you should define base condition is very important all right and always you need to think of that what will be the best condition for my particular for this particular question so here what i know i know that first fibonacci number uh, let's say when n is 0 i know answer will be 0 when n is 1 answer will be 1 so you can say something like if i know if my n is less than equals to let's say 1 I, I will just return the n itself because we know for 0 answer is 0 for 1 answer is 1 so when n will be 0 answer will be n which is 0 when n will be 1 answer will also be 1 so this is the base condition and here we are returning that means at some point we will return so it will never go for the infinite loop so for recursion you need to think about two things how to call the same function with what input we need to call second thing you need to think about is what will be the base condition for my recursive function let's run it okay we'll see so we are getting five all right you can see you can see here that we are getting five all right five we are getting here now let's say you want to call it one more time okay you want to get the six fibonacci number what will be answer eight oh four six sorry here i'm not passing the n that's why yeah so we should get eight this time perfect right now next will be eight plus five thirteen so seven should be thirteen we should get thirteen all right yeah so this is the simple recursive algorithm we have written and i hope you have uh, you have understood the concept now you will say hey you you started with the dynamic programming and what you are teaching us so this is the recursive till this point everything is clear okay now let us understand this particular function which we have written in this function what all we are doing we will try to figure out here what we are doing for the let's say let us take for five only <clears throat> okay for five what we are doing we are coming here we are checking n is less than 1 no you will come here you will call the fibonacci of n minus 1 which is 4 then you will call the fibonacci of n minus 2 which is 3 here you will come and again you will call up to this point okay so let me draw one tree for this one so that it will be easy for you to understand okay let us jump to this tree so in this tree, I have defined one tree for you. For n5, we will call the Fibonacci of 5. From here, we will call the Fibonacci of n minus 1, which is 4, n minus 2, which is 3. And sum of these two, we will just return here. For 4, also again apply the same code. We will call for n minus 1, which is 3, n minus 2, which is 2. So here you can see 2 and 1, 1, 0 and here also for this particular fib of 2 again we will call fib of 1 and fib of 0 okay so we will write here no worries now here did you observe one thing what we are doing here we are uh, we are able to calculate the okay right, fibonacci number but there is one problem did you see one thing this is the fibonacci 3 okay here this whole tree what it will give me this tree will give me the fibonacci of three so don't you think here also this tree will also give me the fibonacci of three okay fine so why we are calculating two times let's jump to the two so this particular tree will give me fibonacci of two so this tree will also give me the fibonacci of two why we are calling again and again don't you think this is the problem here we are calling the same problem again and again so let me uh, explain you dynamic programming now all right what i told you is let me just create the duplicate slide 
okay what is dynamic programming uh, let us try to understand the things one by one so first thing which i want to tell you is here we have seen that we are calculating the problem again and again so let me tell you one thing which is overlapping sub problem okay don't you think we are calculating this sub problem again and again yes we are doing that second thing is what we are doing is for calculating the solution for the nth Fibonacci number, we are using solution of the n minus 1 and n minus 2. So to get the to get the solution of main problem, okay, main problem, we need solution of a small sub problem, let's say, or the sub problem, right? Correct. So these are the two, two things I can say. We are saying overlapping sub problem because we are calculating the Fibonacci of three multiple times. And right, similarly, Fibonacci of two or two also we are calculating multiple times. So here and for the second point, what we are saying is to get the solution of main problem, we need solution of the sub problem, which is n minus one plus n minus two. So if any problem, if any problem it's satisfying these two conditions if you are able to see that my problem we are calculating sub problem again and again and i need the solution of sub problem to get the solution of main problem that means this is known this property we call it as optimal substructure all right i'll tell you why so optimal substructure is nothing but to get the optimal solution, optimal solution of main problem, we need optimal solution of a sub problem. That's why they are calling it optimal substructure. So if any problem is satisfying these two conditions, that means that problem we can solve with the help of dynamic programming. If any problem is satisfying these two properties okay then we can solve that problem we can solve that problem with the help of with the help of dynamic programming that is the thing you need to understand here all right it means this fibonacci we can solve with the help of dynamic programming now understood now what is okay so till this point we understood that which problem we can solve with the help of dynamic programming now in dynamic programming what we do so here we are you are seeing that we are calculating the solution of the uh, we are calculating the problem again and again okay so can i do one thing here in, instead of calculating this fibonacci multiple times okay let's say first time we have calculated this can i store this somewhere in some variable so if next time we will call the same method i will check hey do we have this fibonacci of three in somewhere in my memory if yes return that do not calculate again so dynamic programming is nothing but we will store the solution of the problems into some caching some cache memory okay so what we are saying is let's jump to the same code okay let me take you let me take one array okay array of let's say size uh, i will take let's say n plus one all right now here what i know let me just pass this array also we will pass this array also right now here what i am doing i need to take this array also as the input because the array as the input here now here we are calculating this particular thing and we are returning so can i put here saying that array of n is nothing but the uh, n right then we will just return so instead of returning n can i just return the array of n yes we can return that cool now here what we are doing we are calling these two things and we are returning instead of that can i just store it as the answer of n array of n is nothing but the summation of these two numbers making sense to you or not yes 
now what error we are getting here okay now we need to return also yeah so let us return the array of n cool now here one thing what we are saying is this fibonacci is returning the and we are storing here now before calling that that one i will just calculate if array of n is not equals to minus one that means i got the answer and i just need to return array of n no need to calculate again now you will see hey how you get this minus one so yeah we need to define it here we need to initialize this array with the minus one which is nothing but the so it is like n plus one we will do i plus plus and i just need to initialize the array with the minus one all right so we have initialized our array we are coming here we are putting this answer to the our array and we will just return the answer array and we will not recalculate it so this condition will avoid the recalculation part now what error we are getting i'm not able to understand one second oh they are saying argument so here we are not passing array that's why we are getting the error all right cool let us run it so for five we should get five we are getting five right for eight we should get eight oh for eight we should get 21 yeah and for six we should get eight right so you will say hey we have optimized it now you want to say how to prove that that we have optimized it or not let us do one thing let me take one count variable okay this count will be let's say part of the our class itself static end count i'm just trying to prove you that what we have done here so here let me just increment this count all right after this particular piece of code i would say let me just print it out so I would say what is the count count is plus count all right so what I am trying to do here is till this point how many times we came to calculate the six Fibonacci number let us run it we got five times we went there okay cool now let me just remove this dynamic programming concept means we will re recompute let's say so if you will recompute how many times we will come let's do that 12 times right so previously with the help of brute force approach we were getting six fibonacci number in 12 iteration but when we have applied the dynamic programming okay this concept then we are getting the six fibonacci number in only five steps so that is the power of dynamic programming and this concept okay so storing the data and returning whenever needed that is known as the memoization and what this uh, concept is called as top-down memoization why top-down memoization because what we are doing is we are starting our our function with n is 6 and we are going to the n 0 or 1 we are we are going from top to bottom means from high value to the low value and we are storing the we are storing the data into some memory so this approach is known as the top down memoization top down memoization all right so that is the all about the dynamic programming we so this is just the introduction part in the next video i will bring a lot of questions i hope this is clear to you that what is the dynamic programming when to use how to use and we will see so in the next video we will learn a lot about that i hope it is clear to you now you are happy with the concept it is very easy okay if you are if you feel anything is not clear please comment out i will be happy to clear those things if you like my content please like share subscribe thanks a lot bye